Hello and welcome to the video guide for understanding the fundamentals of the contact verification component for SQL Server Integration Services. My name is Joseph Bertito, one of the sales support engineers here at Melissa Data, and I will be walking you through a live demonstration of how to correctly set up and use the contact verification component, which for the rest of the presentation we'll, re we'll be referring to as the CVC. The CVC is a cleansing and enrichment tool that will allow you to correct addresses and verify that they are deliverable, append geographic information, parse and genderize full names, and validate phone numbers and email addresses. The CVC makes use of the Melissa Data APIs as its driving engine and their extensive collection of reference data from different sources to give you the best results for contact verification. If we were to open up our Business Intelligence Studio, we can see how the Melissa data components are nicely installed as part of the data flow transformations. To use the CVC, you can simply drag and drop the transform onto your data flow palette. So now let's take a look at one of our pre-built packages that uses the CVC. As you can see, we've created a simple data flow containing, our input, containing an input Microsoft SQL database, which is then mapped into the contact verification component. And the results are then put into Microsoft SQL database destinations as well. First, let's take a look at the input. The component is able to process a single database at a time. In this example, we've taken a table called input and mapped it into the component. Let's go ahead and see what we actually have in our data. Our input table consists of some commonly used fields that you would find in a contact database, including names, addresses, emails, and phone numbers. So now let's take a look at the component itself. The Melissa data components for SSIS are all GUI based, having an easy to use step-by-step -step wizard for easy setup. Before we start using the component, we'll need to make sure that the component is installed correctly. To do this, click File, and then select Advanced Configuration option. Enter the license string that your Melissa representative has provided. Specify the path of where you have the CVC data files, and then click on the test configuration button and make sure that there were no errors in initialization. Alternatively, we could also do off-premise validation that makes use of the web services instead of the local data files and APIs. To do off-premise processing, simply enter the customer ID provided to you by, by your Melissa representative and your CVC should now make use of the web services. So now we move back to the main screen. The first step in setting up the component is specifying what your inputs are and then specifying which output properties you wish to include as part of the output fields. Right now, we're actually in the name tab, so we've mapped in our full name column as our input. I'm choosing to output the parsed out first name and last name, as well as the detected gender for the name. If you wish to include other output properties, simply type in the output column name for that property and it will automatically be added as part of your output. The name parsing option gives you additional levels of customization. You can choose to automatically correct first name misspellings, choose the format of your full names, whether they're ordered as first then last, or last then first, or even a mixture of both, select how aggressive name genderizing should be, which applies especially to neutral names, and specify how you'd like to, per to perform salutation slugs. Next, we move to the address tab. Here, we've mapped our address inputs from the incoming database and specified the desired outputs as well. The address output properties return the corrected, standardized, and parsed addresses. The component also allows you to map in additional input fields, including the suite, urbanization, and plus four. The rule of thumb is that the more input information you provide, the component, the better the percentage of coded addresses you get. The component also has some additional options that you can set for address validation. Here, you can select whether you would like to code US addresses, Canadian addresses, or both. The component also offers several levels of validation, including DPV, LaxLink, SweetLink, Address Plus, and Delivery Indicator. For more information on these options, please refer to the reference guide. The component also has options for keeping vanity city names and allow for the handling of diacritics, which is especially useful when dealing with French-Canadian addresses. Finally, 
you have also have the option to produce the USPS CAS form and the Canadian SOA form as well. Several additional option output properties are also available for you to provide other useful enrichment information such as the address type and delivery point. Now we move over to the geocoder tab. Geocoder is able to give you the geographic information of a given address such as the latitude and longitude as well as the census and county information. Here we can see that this, there are several options for sending your input. You can choose to get the geographic information based off the validated address in the address tab. Alternatively, you can also use other forms of input to retrieve geocoding information such as the address key which can be retrieved as part of the output of address validation or a different set of address inputs. From here, you can select to output the latitude and longitude information or other geographic and census information by simply populating a column name for the desired output. The geocoder offers three levels of resolution depending on your tier level. You have rooftop accuracy, which covers about 96% of the entire US, nine digit level of accuracy, and five digit level of accuracy. In the phone and email tab, we are able to take input phone numbers and email addresses, parse them into their individual properties, and validate them. Again, in order to use the phone and email validation, we simply map in our inputs and specify the desired outputs. Aside from the parsed out components, the phone validation offers other enrichment information tied to the phone number, such as the city and state, county information, and time zone. The email validation has several options for correction and validation. You could choose whether or not to correct syntax, standardize casing, and automatically update all domain names. And you can also choose to validate emails against the supplied domain reference data or perform a real-time MX lookup on the mail server's DNS MX record. You can also choose to output the parsed out email components such as the mailbox name and the top level domain. The fifth tab lets you specify the pass-through fields. Pass-through fields are simply those columns that you want to carry over as is from your input to the output. On the final tab, we have our filtering options where decisions on what constitutes a good record can be made. The results code column will output a comma delimited string that contains different result codes to describe the status of your record. For example, a good address will be represented by the result code AS01, while a bad phone number might, be, might return a PE05. By default, the component will not perform any filtering. The way filtering works is that any record satisfying your filtering rule will be sent to the valid output stream while records that don't satisfy the filtering rule will be redirected to the invalid stream. You could also choose not to do any filtering, and this will simply send all the records to the valid output stream. The component has pre-built out-of-the-box filtering rules. However, if you wish to build your own expression, if you, if you wish to build your own rules for filtering, you could certainly do so. The component provides an expression builder to help guide you in building your filter expressions. In building your own custom filter expressions, you also have the ability to save that rule for future, for future use. For the purposes of this example, we will be selecting the full address matches rule to filter out only the good addresses from our database. When we're done, simply click the OK button to finalize the component. After setting up the contact verification component, we then map its outputs to two different destinations. Again, this would be your valid records and the invalid records. Where the records get directed to is driven by the filter expressions we've just set up. In this case, we've done a filter expression to send only the records with good addresses to the valid destination. Now let's take a look at how the record re results look like when you run the package. We can see how the component sent four of the incoming records to the valid destination and one record to the invalid destination that didn't pass our filtering expression due to an invalid address. If we take a look at our valid records, the component was able to parse out the full names into first and last names. Addresses are now standardized and corrected. Also, missing components such as the zip codes were appended. Additional enrichment data has also been returned, such as the plus four and the delivery point. 
as well as geographic information like the latitude and longitude. Phone numbers are parsed out into area code, prefix, and suffix. Email addresses are standardized and corrected. And we also have our original data, so we can compare the data cleansing side by side. And finally, we have the result codes, which tell us what the status of the record is, whether we had good or bad addresses, names, phone numbers, and emails. This concludes our video demonstration on how to set up and run the contact verification component for SSIS. In this video, we have learned how to map our, your database into the CVC, select the inputs and outputs for name parsing, address verification, geocoding, email validation, phone validation, as well as filtering your good and bad records. If you wish to learn more, you can take a look at some of our other and more advanced videos on the data quality components for SSIS. If you have any questions, you can contact us at 1-800-800-6245 or email us at g-dqt at melissadata.com. Again, that's 1-800-800-6245 or g-dqt at melissadata.com. Thank you.